Hey guys, it's Leo with Dreaming Tree, and today we're gonna to show you how to put together these super cute and beautiful Valentine's Day projects. So let's just take a look and go through each one. Um, in front of me here, as you can see, this beautiful centerpiece slash banner. Um, it's actually very, very simple to put together. And uh, the beautiful part about it is that um, when you wanna display it, it's very simple to put together. This main heart here has some notches, and these hearts have some notches, and you simp simply slide this down to kind of anchor it into place. There's a cool little arrow going through there, and the main focal point of this banner is this circular photo of either you and your loved one, your husband, it could be uh, your grandparents or your parents. Um, and actually, the cool thing about this again is this part here, if you guys have used our bendy cards, you're familiar with how the little bendy part slides into the notch and then anchors itself down. Well, this basically does the same thing. And you can actually take this thing and fold it up and you can mail it to your recipient. So uh, you can put it away and store it. So it's not one of those 3D things that you create and then wonder, well, what am I gonna, how am I gonna store this thing or what, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do with it later? So again, you just simply slide that in to place. It anchors itself down. You throw your heart right in there and you've got yourself a beautiful little centerpiece. Now this would look great on a mantle. And we were actually talking about um, other uses for this could be a great anniversary gift, or if you did this all in white, could you picture this at like the head table of a wedding, or maybe even on that table at a wedding where you know you go to fill out the little guest book? Um, I, I think the possibilities are endless. Not to sound cliche, but you could do a lot of great stuff with this. It could even use it as a at a baby shower, or you know, you guys are creative, so I'm sure you'll come up with a million ways to use this. Now, we've also included a cool little template that helps you cut the, uh, the photo out, which we'll show you as well. So that is that. I think that's a, a really beautiful piece and you just kind of can't stop looking at it. Now, next up here, uh, we have another pop-up card. Uh, we've got a beautiful Cupid motif on the front that's cut out of the actual card base. So there's no piecing at all. The cutting machine does all the work for you. And you've got that wow factor when you open it up. You've got a beautiful Victorian looking uh, heart that pops out of the center. So for those of you guys that uh, created our Tis the Season pop-up cards, the process is gonna be very familiar to you and the outcome is going to be uh, jaw dropping, hopefully. We also have some beautiful motifs on the inside, uh, scalloped border. It's beautiful, it folds flat, five by seven, so uh, Standard postage should work. Also have a, a really pretty envelope that comes with it. Um, a beautiful Valentine's themed motif on the front there. And just slides right in. You know, glue it down, pop dot it down, and it's ready to go. A beautiful, one of a kind um, Valentine. Now finally we have a chocolate box shaped as a fan. Now this um, rosette-like fan here on the front really just gives this thing a lot of dimension and a lot of interest. We've got a beautiful love caption on the front. We actually cut this out of um, glitter paper, but you can cut it out of whatever you'd like. There's a cool little bow on the front. It's very easy to assemble. Now let me open this up and show you why it's super cool. We've created this little uh, grid system inside, so you can put little chocolates in there. Or you can put whatever you want in there, anything that'll fit into these spaces. Um, there's a beautiful liner on the bottom because you know if you put some chocolate in there It may seep into and actually stain the paper So you definitely want to put you can actually put vellum down there too to kind of act as a barrier between your chocolate and The paper on the bottom, but the construction is very solid um, Goes together very simply and easily and we've also included another well You can actually cut the same one out twice, but you know in your typical chocolate boxes you have that little transparent vellum sheet on top just to kind of pretty it up even more. Um, so this thing is beautiful as well. Uh, it's a beautiful bundle. Uh, it's very adult themed. Um, for the most part, very simple to put together. I believe 
The card itself is only four or five SVG files. Um, this thing is not very difficult to put together. You're basically piecing a bunch of flat pieces together. And um, as far as the card stock that we used, uh, the card stock was primarily, actually exclusively, American Crafts AC card stock. And uh, there's some glitter, some glitter paper here um, that we use to kind of just um, catch your eye. Uh, actually, it's foil paper, and then we've got glitter paper as well. We jazzed it up with some heart-shaped rhinestones. Um, and what else? Oh, as far as the designer paper, uh, this features graphic 45s Amore and Gilded Lily papers. So any of the pattern designs that you see on there are graphic 45, one of those two, and we will include links to those specific paper packs in the supply list on the product listing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin the assembly. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually show you the assembly of the envelope, which is two pieces. So you've got this piece, you're gonna fold this in like so. But before we do that, we're gonna put this little liner slash backside piece in so that this, this beautiful little motif shows through here. And what we're gonna do so you don't want to get this too far out to the edge. You just want to concentrate your glue within and inside these little details here. Try to get a nice, soft and even line of glue. Don't overdo it. And just try to visualize where this liner ends as far as its shape. And got my texture side out. Just make sure that it's not overlapping that score line. Try to get it as even as possible. So you've got a nice little border around there and that's going to um, show that little motif. Okay and then finally I guess you could do it this way or this way. It looks better if you do it this way. You're just going to fold these in and you're gonna just put some glue along the edge here. So about there and there. And we're just gonna close that up. Hold it for just a few seconds just to make sure that it gets a good grip. And that is your envelope. Very pretty. You can put a little sticker on there or pop dot it or glue it down if you'd like with just a little dab and your card will fit in there just perfectly. So let's go ahead and move on to the assembly of the actual card. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put together the pop-up element of the card. And this is the one time that I myself am glad that we're doing a video because we, what we wanted to do was make sure that each side of this had the same pattern, okay? And in order to accomplish that, uh, a few of these base pieces have three layers and a few of them only have two. And that's what I'm going to explain to you right now. So all these pieces here that you see are gonna cut out of one piece of paper. Now what I've done is I've indicated with the letter N that on this piece here you don't put anything, on this piece here you don't put anything, and on the back of these, I've indicated with the letter P where you place the other part of this pattern piece. Okay, so you can see that that's gonna go there, that's gonna go there, and then the rest of these are going to have these pieces here, okay, to finish them off, and that's gonna go like that, and then we're gonna glue this down here in just a second, but Again, these sides here that have the letter N, you're not gluing anything to those. You're simply leaving them alone because they already have the pattern on them. And then the other two are gonna get glued on like so. So let me go through that one more time because I feel like this, it's, it's like a mind bender. Um, had we not put these letters on here, I think you guys may have been a little confused. So one more time here. I know you can rewind, but I'll save you the step. So again, 
You're going to cut this out of either a solid color cardstock or a pattern. In our case, we use nothing but patterns, but in this video, we're doing solid cardstock in case you want to go for just a more classic look to the card. So again, lay your pieces out just like so, okay? And you'll see here on this um, hemisphere or this side, you're not gluing anything on here. This side here, you're gonna put um, one of these panels on there. This side here, you're gonna put one of these panels on. You're, got, you're not gonna glue anything on there. And then if you flip these over here on these two sides, you're gonna glue these pieces. Okay, just like so. And then the rest of them, you're gonna fill in with these pink pieces. Um, you're gonna put one here, put one here, and then also on the other side, you're gonna put a pink piece on this side and a pink piece on this side. And these, again, you don't put anything on at all. Okay, so I've got both segments of the pop-up hearts assembled. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to feed this one here that's got the slit up at the top. We're gonna feed that up like that. And these little, these little tabs that are sticking out, we're gonna feed them through this little slot at the bottom. Okay, and hopefully you can see that. See if I can show you. There you go. You can see that pop right in there. Okay, so there is your heart. Okay, and as, as you can see, if you've done it right, you will have the same design on each little, each little side here. So we did that right. Again, just follow along with the little diagram that I showed you in the video. Now, the next step is going to be putting together the little anchoring mechanisms. And you're going to have four pieces. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna take our first piece that looks like this. Oops. Looks like this, okay. And we're going to slide it under like so, okay. And then we're gonna take its neighbor piece, this guy here, okay. And we're going to slide him. Let me see if I can do this. These pieces are so delicate. Okay, there you go, you can see that. We're gonna slide him on his neighbor over the top. <clears throat> over the top, that was a uh, Sylvester Stallone movie. Not that you guys would care. <laughs> it's probably pretty, probably the dumbest movie I've ever seen. Um, and then we're going to slide these two on top of each other. Okay, just make sure that they get a good grip. And then these pieces here you're just gonna kind of fold them out and grab them right there. Okay, so that's gonna make up the first part of it. All right, now, once we've kind of gotten that into place, we're gonna swing over. You know, this kind of came out of position, but that's okay. Slide it back in, and we'll get the next piece. Okay, so the next piece that you're gonna to wanna to get is, as you can see here, on this white piece, right there and where I'm pointing to with my pinky. You're gonna grab this piece here. It's so difficult to show you, hopefully you're able to see it. You're gonna grab this, the little tab's gonna be right there. We're gonna slide that over that white notch, okay? And then it's gonna go under this other notch here. Okay, so you see how I connected that. So we've got three of the pieces in place. The last, those are probably the toughest ones to get together. This last piece, there's a little bit of resistance, but everything begins to kind of um, hold on and um, keep its shape. So let's go over to this side. I'm just kind of showing you a side angle of these three here. So you've got this white piece here. You're gonna take this piece and we're gonna slide it under this white piece. Okay, this is very difficult to actually demonstrate on camera. We're gonna slide that under, and then we're gonna take this piece and slide it like so. And then we're gonna move over to this side. Oops, and we're gonna 
slide that underneath. There we go. We might need to just kind of adjust some of these because they've probably lost their grip a little bit, but that's kind of how it should look once it's done. You should have these two little, two little tabs on either side and it should close and open like so. So take a look at that. Just make sure that you've got it right. And that's pretty much it as far as that goes. We're pretty much ready to um, put the rest of the car together. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just kinda lay out your card as if you were going to open it up, okay? And we've got this piece here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our completely assembled um, heart and we're gonna take these tabs, okay? And we're going to slide them into the slit. Okay, and you can just keep that flat once it's in there. And let's just flip this around. And you can see the little uh, tabs sticking through there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put glue just underneath these tabs. And make sure that when you're putting glue down that you're actually putting glue towards the uh, end of the card and not inside. So you wanna put glue underneath the tab um, closer, closest to the edge of this panel. Okay, now I went a little heavy on the glue there. I'm just gonna push and hold that down until it's nice and dry. No one's gonna see this side of it, so it's not a big deal. Give it a second to dry. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this down like so. But before we put glue on this piece here, we do want to get some glue inside of the little Cupid motif. And it's extremely important that you don't overdo it here because if you do, you're gonna get some of that glue squirting out uh, and it's gonna show through on the other side and you don't want that. So just be very careful as you place glue inside of Cupid. Do your best to kind of get it in there. And I've uh, been so busy that I just haven't had time to order the little, uh, little tips for these glue bottles to kind of give me more precision because we are doing some pretty intricate things here and I know that that would help as far as the assembly goes to making sure that I'm controlling my glue. Uh, but again, I'm just kind of using this little dot method uh, just because it's more precise and I'm, again, I'm not sitting down so I don't have the proper leverage and I don't want to make a huge mess so that you guys think I don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay, so that's pretty much good there. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to place glue on the actual panel. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to put it around the outside of the panel because I don't want to put it on the inside of the panel because of Cupid and I don't I want to make sure that I don't get any glue on Cupid so just around the outside and also just make sure that make sure you watch these corners here because that's where your little motifs are going to go too so this is kind of kind of tricky but just use your eyeballs and make sure that you're getting the glue where it needs to go okay so I'm going to go ahead and place this down just make sure that you focus on this side here and just make sure you've got a nice nice border up at the top, uh, in the middle, I'm sorry, on the side. And just make sure that these scallops don't infringe on the score line there in the middle. Now what we can do is we can take this piece, okay, and I'm gonna feed this through the slit. Okay, there's Almost had them both. It's a little tricky. It's totally worth it though. Totally worth it. Get that slide through there. There they are. Okay. And take this panel and just wiggle it around until you've got it on top of the other one. And it's nice and seamless and perfect. So they all match up. And again, we're gonna take these tabs, we're gonna fold them this way and glue them that way. Okay, so we're just gonna pop a little bit of glue underneath this tab. Okay, and just push that down and hold it down until it's dry. 
Okay, and now with this one, we don't have a design on the back of the card, so we don't need to really worry too much about where we're placing the glue. We can get pretty crazy here, just as long as you're not getting it on the actual motif there. Okay. I don't like big, chunky lines of glue. I feel like it causes the paper to warp. Okay, now I'm kind of speeding through this just so that you can see it. I would recommend putting little dots of glue probably out towards the end where the scallops are just to make sure that they don't peel up and they hold down. You can even, if you want to get messy, you can take your finger and get like, get like a good glob in there. That's probably not a very good glob. And you know, even use your finger just to get out to the edge there. Um, whatever glue method you use, I'm sure will be fine. Uh, the idea is just to make sure that these little corners stay put. Okay, so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take this and we're going to glue it down in place. Make sure you've got a nice even border all the way around. Okay, and as you can see, as you did that, the card popped open. That's what we want it to do, or the little heart popped open. So the final test then is just to make sure that this guy opens and closes, and he does. It's a beautiful card. It's a little tedious with some of the smaller pieces, but totally worth it, works every time, and your recipient is going to love it. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna to put together is this beautiful fan box, fan chocolate box. And as you can see, we've got some nice little compartments for some chocolate goodness. And um, yeah, let's get right into it actually. So what we're gonna do is we'll put together the bottom first, okay? And we'll just look at the pieces that we have here. Now these three pieces here are going to make up the edge of the box. And then we've got the bottom, and this is a nice little liner piece that's gonna go inside. And as you can see, the liner piece is a tiny bit smaller so that it fits in there beautifully. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we'll begin by simply um, piecing these pieces together first. So what we have here, we, these are the actual pieces that are gonna get glued to the base. And then these pieces here, these tabs here, are what you're going to use to attach the sides. Okay, so okay, so we're going to piece these together like so. Now these these little sections here are just for reinforcement. Okay, so we're not going to do anything with those just yet. What you want to do is you want to take this larger piece with the little saw tabs at the bottom, and we're going to line these up. Just make sure that these are nice and lined up that these score lines at the bottom here are nice and lined up. And we're gonna glue that down like so. Okay, just hold that down, make sure that it gets a good grip. Okay, and we're gonna slide this over and we're gonna glue this piece down here. Again, just take your time, and make sure that everything is nice and lined up. I'm gonna place glue on this tab here. And push that over and hold it down. Just make sure that it's got a good grip. Okay, and now what we can do is we can actually take and fold this piece down and glue that down to itself. Okay, so let's do that. We can definitely be generous with the glue on this. Make sure it's got a good hold. Okay, so just push and hold that down. Make sure that it's got a good grip. Okay. And now we can actually do the same thing with this piece here. Get some glue on there. And push this piece down. Hold it in place. Okay, and what we're gonna end up doing then is we're gonna bring this piece around. Now you may wanna just fold this just to kinda get it trained. We're gonna bring this piece around and we're gonna glue it right there. Okay, so go ahead and get some glue. Pop it on that tab. Glue that into place. Probably gonna have to do this in the air, so to speak. 
Just make sure that it's nice and aligned and just hold it until it's got a good grip. Okay, and now once that gets a hold, you can go ahead and just kind of bend that to start training it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on this large reinforcement piece. And we're gonna fold that in and glue it to itself. You can pop that on your table just to get some more leverage and more pressure. Okay, so that's good. And now you can see that it's kind of starting to take shape. You can kind of pull it a little bit just to kind of help it get its shape. You can fold these in. Okay. And we're gonna fold these in. And now two ways of doing this. Um, I kind of prefer putting the liner in first because that's gonna help shape everything. So we can flip this over and we're gonna put glue along these tabs here. And then we're gonna insert this right in. And as you can see, it's going to help form the box for us. And then once we, once we have that in, we can just flip it over and put the bottom of it on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put glue along the tabs inside. I love items like this as far as the construction goes because they kind of put themselves together and it's just kind of like kind of like mowing the lawn where you just kind of just following the uh, following the grain so to speak. So we're going to pop that in Okay, and just make sure that the sides are nice and lined up and that you've got a good 90 degree angle there. And then these guys here, you can just push that in just to make sure that you've got a nice curve all the way around. So we've got that and now here is the bottom and that fits beautifully. The engineering on this is so precise, I love it. I love when things just go together perfectly. So we're just gonna go ahead and put glue on all these tabs here. Just make sure you try to get it out to the edge as close as possible, but not too close, because it is gonna kind of squirt out. And then cover this whole base layer here with glue as well. Texture side up, pop that down, just like so. Okay, now we actually also have another liner piece that you can just pop in there, and that's really gonna prevent the chocolate from staining your paper, especially the, the base. Um, okay, so we've got that. You know what, while we're, while we're at this point, let's go ahead and talk about these little compartments. Okay, so as far as the little compartments go, what you wanna do is just kind of lay these out, um, how I have them here, and so that they're kind of facing the same direction. Uh, as far as these little notches go. So there's gonna be four of them going vertically, four of them going horizontally. The ones that are going this way, as far as how I have it laid out, are going to be pointed down, okay? So what you can do is we can take this larger piece, okay, and just kind of just pop it in there just to get an idea of where it's going. And then we're gonna take the larger piece and just kind of slot it in there like so, okay? And then the rest of it is just gonna kinda come together for you. So we're gonna take this piece and slide it under there. Take this piece, slide it under there. And we'll take this piece, slide it under there. Okay, and then finally, we just take the rest of these pieces and I feel like we're just giving you a bunch of puzzles to figure out today. There we go, isn't that cool? 
I bet you never made one of these. No, I haven't. And there you go. Just like so, pretty, pretty dang easy, if you ask me. Um, it'll be really cool. So there you go, just like that. Okay, so we've got the little compartment in there. Let's go ahead and start with the lid. Now again, I've got another vellum piece that you can put on top uh, just to make it really nice. And because um, that's typically what you see with one of those heart-shaped boxes, you've got that nice little piece of vellum. So let's move that out of the way and let's take a look at the lid. And now again, just like last time, we've got a liner piece and we've got the actual top of the lid. And then we've got these three pieces that make up the actual sides of the lid. So let's go ahead and begin with the assembly of the sides. And what we're gonna do is just kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. Now again, these are the little reinforcement pieces here that are gonna get glued to themselves. So let's take a look at this guy here. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and glue the pieces like so. Okay, just like we did with the bottom. We're gonna get that glued together and actually this tab's gonna go on top. So one at a time here. Let's go ahead and you know what? Kind of helps to crease this just so that when you go to align these, you can actually see how everything is lining up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this tab over. And just make sure that these are nice and lined up. And I'm just gonna get some glue on this tab and Fold that over, hold it, and just make sure it's got a good grip. Okay, I'm gonna slide this guy over, do the same thing on this side. Make sure that it's nice and aligned. Okay, get some glue. And glue that over. Beautiful. Okay, so again, we can actually take and glue these down here and here, but we don't wanna do that here until we get the other piece in place. So let's go ahead and just get glue all up in here. And push and hold that down. Make sure it's got a nice strong hold. Okay. Probably add a little bit more under here. Slide her over. And push and hold this guy down. Make sure he's got a good grip. All of a sudden my project is both a he and a she. I'm, uh, my paper is confused, it doesn't know what's going on. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to connect these pieces. Got a tab here, we're gonna glue that to the inside here. So I'm just gonna place some glue on this tab, glue it to the inside of the other one. Make sure you've got nice flush and straight angles all around. You can see that there, okay. Give it a few seconds to get its grip. And just make sure that all your tabs are at the bottom, the reinforcement pieces are on top. So that's got a pretty good hold. I'm gonna place this down like so. And I'm gonna put glue on this reinforcement piece. Uh, that, is, that is not a good job as far as my glue technique goes. Okay, and we're gonna glue that down just to add that reinforcement. It's gonna make this box feel nice and sturdy. Okay, great. So, got that in place. Now, we're gonna take these, these teeth, and just fold them down. 
They're nice and big so that you have a lot of surface area for that glue to really stick and grip so this thing really stays put. Now we're gonna take our liner, okay? And I'm gonna place glue along the tabs on the inside. So I'm putting little dots on the teeth. And I'm gonna take my liner and I'm gonna actually leave it texture side up. I'm gonna slide it in. Just be careful not to get glue everywhere. Okay, okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece and we're just gonna glue it to the top, like so. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and just put a generous amount of glue on the tabs, along the edge, and on the inside. Okay, so that is that, and let's just test it out. Let me move this vellum piece, and it fits beautifully. As you can see, it's snug as a bug in a rug. I don't know if I made that up or if that's the saying. Sorry guys, I'm a little corny sometimes. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this fan. Okay, and the fan does have score lines on it. So what, what you're gonna do, this little piece here, these two edge pieces are gonna be flat. And then you're gonna begin by just kind of folding these. And base, at this point here, these are gonna be mountain folds. Okay, so just do your best to get these nice and scored. Okay, so again, this is actually gonna be flat and sticking out this way. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'll bend that back for a second. Okay, just like that. So you can see that we've got the first one there and then we're gonna take this piece and just kind of bend it the opposite way to create a valley fold there. Okay, and then again, at anywhere you see one of these little circles is gonna be a mountain fold. Okay, so we just wanna make sure that you're getting everything folded the right way like that. Okay. And then this piece is gonna go in. Like so, and just kind of, and then again, we've got the little circle here. That's gonna be a mountain fold. Oops. Okay, so we've got the fan pretty much um, folded the way we want it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on the bottom of this side piece here, the side of the fan, all the way down. And what you wanna do is just take this and align it with this heart up here and just make sure that it's nice and flush with the edge as well. And just push and hold that down until it's nice and glued down, okay? And eventually what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this piece out over here and glue this side down. But what you wanna do um, just to maintain nice symmetry is on this piece here, and you probably won't be able to see it, but there's gonna be a score line down the middle here to help you align this middle valley fold with that score line. So what you can do is you can just place glue on that score line, it can be hot glue or it can just be regular glue. I think, uh, I think on the demo unit or on the actual product on the site, we used hot glue because uh, it just worked a little bit better. Just a few dabs right down the middle. Now I'm not gonna do that because technically when it's stretched out, it's actually maintaining its shape very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put glue on this piece here and I am going to glue this down flush along the side and just make sure that the little butt of the heart matches up as well. Just push and hold that down until you get a nice grip. And that's actually pretty just by itself. Um, don't really need to add much more to it. But 
we've got this piece here that's going to go on top. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to place glue on the back side of this guy. Okay, so just be careful that you don't get too much near the little designs. Okay, put a generous amount there. Okay, I'm going to flip this guy over and again start with the butt of the heart up there or the top of the heart. I don't know why I'm obsessed with butts. And just glue that down, make sure it's got a nice hold. Okay, so that is that. All right, and finally, let's go ahead and just let's. Start piecing this thing together so you can kind of see what it's all going to look like. Now, you know, without the love caption on here, I mean, this is just beautiful for, um, it's just beautiful by itself, even without the additional elements that we're going to put on it. Um, you could totally jazz this up with like an Asian theme too, I think it would look really cool. So let's take a look at the bow and the caption. I'm just going to show you the caption real quick. It's, uh, it's made up of four pieces. Uh, we actually use this silver foil. And what you're going to do is you're going to take and layer these pieces like so. Okay, so we've got the red piece on top, middle piece in the middle, or I'm sorry, the white piece in the middle, and then the other red piece below. Okay, so you're going to glue all three layers together just like that. So once you have the actual caption in place, now I actually don't have the, uh, the scalloped heart here, but you're gonna glue this to the white scalloped heart, and then that white scalloped heart is gonna get glued. Well, actually, you can take the white part and glue it to the silver piece here. So you've got the heart with the, with the nice um, inset uh, white piece, and then you can just glue that right on top there. Okay, and that's going to get either pop dotted or glued about there. And finally, we just put together the little bow. So we've got this piece here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my finger and just start training this to kind of bend it. I'm going to do that on both sides. This will be a lot easier with paper. This foil, this foil paper is so much more th dense and it's so much thicker. It's a little bit harder to work with. And then you're just gonna wanna bend this even more, especially around the little edge here where you really need it to bend. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna take my finger here and crease that. I'm gonna bend this in. So you're gonna wanna take and put some glue on this little end cap here and actually we can put some glue here in the middle too. We're gonna to glue that down right in the middle. And then we're gonna glue this other piece right to it. Okay, you wanna hold that down. Now this, this foil paper is gonna be a little bit more difficult to work with, but as you can see, that is the end result. Okay, and now you've got this piece here. It's got some score lines on it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the middle piece over the middle of the bow. I'm gonna bend that other piece back and bend that piece back like that and just get that glued down. So you've got a nice bow. And then this piece, you just glue to the back here. Okay, and you can see this is what it should look like when it's all done. So you get that all glued. And then you just place it right here, roughly on your box and you are all set. So last but not least, our gorgeous banner. And what I'm gonna do is go through all the individual sections one at a time here. And for the sake of kind of going through it, cause really this is not really that difficult. Um, what I'm gonna do is use my tape gun this time around. So you've got these two large hearts with the slits. Okay, and I'm just gonna put some glue on the back of these 
just make sure that the top is nice and lined up. Kind of, kind of run your finger along the edge there just to make sure that it's nice and flush. Okay. Now, I don't actually love the tape glider, but since we've all we're really doing here is showing you where the pieces go, I don't really want to spend too much time waiting for glue to dry because uh, technically I think you guys could probably figure this out without a video, but that's not how I roll. I want to make sure that you guys have all the information you need. So you've got the hearts. Now this piece here, the bottom of this, the little slit, you'll notice that this slit here has a, a larger slit and then there's like a really tiny little nipple slit, I guess we can call it. And uh, you wanna make sure that the, the bottom of this is lined up and just flush with that little tinier slit. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some glue on there and just get that nice and lined up and kind of pay attention to the rest of the piece too. Make sure you've got a nice even border all the way around there as well. You can do the same thing on that other side. Okay, and again, using a tape gun just to save some time. Okay, get that nice and aligned. And technically, if you do get that aligned perfectly, the rest of this should just kind of fall into place. Okay. So we've got that put together. Okay, I'm just gonna fold it just to make sure that it folds nicely. And the next thing we can do is go ahead and put our V and our O down. Okay, looks like I'm back to the glue. Okay. And just do your best to get that nice and centered. Okay. And you're gonna glue your V down there. So let's go ahead and do that. And just make sure that they're kind of on the same horizontal axis, so to speak, so that everything is nice and symmetrical. And at this point, you can take your letters and get those glued down. Okay, so there's your V and your O. Get those glued down. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that part. Um, but that pretty much takes care of this piece. Now we added some rhinestones and some of these hearts here just to kind of jazz it up even more. Okay, so I'm gonna take this piece and just kind of move it out of the way for a second. Let's take a look at the left side and the right side. Now, the left side and the right side are basically the same. So the left and the right side of the banner are almost identical, except what you're gonna wanna do is take these two hearts with these little um, tails coming off of them and just make sure that you get the right one um, for the left and for the right. Now, you'll notice that if I put the E right there, it works, okay? The, the actual left side of the E is vertical. Now, if we put the E here and line it up with that tail, you'll notice that it's kind of slanted. Okay, that tells you that this is actually the heart for the L. Okay, so we wanna keep this for the L. So let's take the L and kind of place it on there. And as long as that left side of the L is vertical, which it is, you know you have the right heart for the left side of the banner. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is take these decorative panels and glue them down. This is a little bit backwards compared to the center, but I'll show you why we're doing it this way. So just make sure that you get that glued down and just make sure you've got a nice even border on the left and right side. Okay, and the reason that we're putting this down first is because this heart, when we glue it down, it needs to overlap this panel, okay? So what can help you in determining how to place this is just putting the heart down first and then putting this down, seeing kind of where you need it to be and then gluing it down. 
So we've got that in place. Now, same goes with this left piece here. I'm just gonna place the heart down. Just get an idea of where it's gonna go. I'm not gluing it, I'm just kind of placing it. And then I'm gonna take this piece and position it to where I want it. I'm gonna move the heart out of the way. Just kind of take a mental snapshot of where that's gonna go. And then get some glue on it. And just center it. Make sure that it's nice and flush with that other piece there. And get that glued down. Okay, and then finally, we've got this little end cap piece here that we're just gonna glue down. Okay, just get that nice and centered on that piece there, glue that down. Now, the, uh, each side here has these little hearts. Okay, now, if you line these hearts up, you'll see that there are um, two hearts that are just a tiny bit longer. Okay, and those are just gonna get glued right in there and this other one is gonna get glued right there. Okay, so we've got that. And now, you're gonna go ahead and you can glue down your eye. Okay, so let's do that. Get that glued down. Just a lot of fun pieces. It's just a really pretty puzzle. That's what we're dealing with here. And then the letter I. Obviously, you want your texture side up. Try to get that nice and centered. Okay. And let's find our L. Okay, so we've got our L. Now, this one's kind of cut off a little bit because we've got that L kind of floating out into space, which is by design. And as you're putting this down, try to line it up with that little tail there. Just make sure that you've got that nice and lined up. And while it's still wet, it might help. Oh, come on, L. It might help to kind of position him. And move this piece around so you got it just right. Okay, so this is what one of the pieces is gonna look like. Now this, here on this side is gonna be a uh, mountain fold, and then you've got a valley fold here. So that's how it's going to bend. And then this little tab here is gonna get glued onto the middle piece, okay? And you're just gonna get that glued on there, but we'll do that at the end here. I just wanted to kind of show you. So the assembly of this piece is gonna be exactly the same as this piece. Okay, these are just both uh, the two sides. And so I'm not actually gonna show you that. It's kind of redundant. Okay, so we're gonna just kind of move that out of the way. Okay, now let's take a look at the assembly of the top heart that has the little photo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this base piece. We've got this, um, uh, this lacy heart piece. It's gonna get glued to the top. Okay, just make sure that you got it nice and centered on there. And just pay attention to these little slits inside of the hearts. Just make sure that that isn't being obstructed. And now you've got these two little hearts with slits on them. You're just gonna get glued right on those little slits and they're decorative, but they also add an additional element of reinforcement because it is gonna be holding an arrow so just make sure that you position that so that the slit is still visible. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just be real gentle with the glue on this piece here. You don't need too much. I put way too much on the first one and it just created a mess. That was just the right amount. Okay, and you should have a nice little border going around that. You can do this either way. You can put those on first which would actually help with the placement of the lacy heart as well. It uh, doesn't matter. And then you've got this piece here. It's gonna get glued on here. You should have a nice little shadow layer going all the way around it. So we're gonna go ahead and get that glued down. Okay. 
And then finally, we have a nice little heart that goes right in the center of that. And you guys can really jazz this up. I can picture some awesome embossing, um, inking, depending on what kind of paper you have. Okay, so that is that heart. Okay, now let's take a look at the arrow. The arrow's pretty straightforward. You've got a kind of a blunt end of the arrow and then a pointy end. These are going to get glued back to back, like so. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and glue one side of the arrow to itself. Okay, so just make sure that you get glue out to the edges so that it sticks. Okay, just slide that on there and slide it until you get the tips to meet and just push that down. It's just gonna make our arrow thicker, make it stronger. Okay, and then what we're gonna do Okay, so the next thing we can do is actually place the arrowhead on our arrow. So the arrowhead, in this case, we cut it out of glitter. You will see score lines on it, and you're gonna basically fold it at the score lines. And we're gonna put some glue right on the back of the arrowhead, and the tip is gonna line up with the tip so that you really can't make a mistake. Okay, so we get that nice and lined up. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side because it's kind of a dimensional arrow. It's really cool. I'm just gonna glue that to that side. Okay. So there's your arrowhead. Cool. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little lime green decorative piece and as you can see, one end of it is actually both ends of it looks like are kind of beveled, they're round. So it doesn't really matter which side you use. You're gonna to wanna to put some glue on. Don't put glue on the whole thing, and I'll show you why. Um, we're gonna put a little bit of glue on just about, uh, I'd say, three quarters of it. Okay. And then we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it flush up against the arrowhead and lay it down right dead center on the arrow. Oops. Okay. So that's how it should look there. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to feed it through the slit And we're gonna feed it through the other way. There's quite a bit of friction on the paper there. And you just feed it through until you got it about halfway through and then what you can do is you can take the tail of your arrow, and this thing also has some score lines. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on the back piece here. Okay, and we're gonna lift this piece up that we didn't glue, and we're gonna glue that right about there. Okay, make sure that gets a good hold. And then we can take and glue the rest of this down, this little decorative piece. So that's kind of what that should look like. And when that, when that dries, you can technically still move that around just to get it more centered. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take, in this case, we have a silver piece and a purple piece. We're gonna glue those together. Now again, this is Glitter paper, a little difficult sometimes to get things to adhere to it, but as long as you're patient, it will stick. Okay, so we'll get that glued. And 
Got that there. Here is a photo. <clears throat> then we're going to take our photo, and this is actually uh, it's my Uncle Herman and my Aunt Janie. My Uncle Herman, uh, he's the one that actually invented Velcro, believe it or not. And I'm totally just kidding. I totally just made all that up. I don't even know who these people are. I just found this photo online. Um, so you're going to glue that on there. And that's going to get glued on right about there. Okay. And now actually, I have a t uh, video that shows you how to cut this out using the included template. So just look for the little link in the YouTube video and click on that and I will show you how to do that. Okay, so there is the main focal point of the banner. Okay, and now let's take a look at the assembly of the little rose piece. Um, it's actually pretty simple. What you're gonna wanna do though, so you're gonna wanna take these two pieces and just kind of begin to train them and bend them together because they do, they do stick out. You want them to stick out. now. You can take a pencil if you want. That can kind of help with the bending. Okay, so actually let's just get these nice and lined up. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a pencil and just kind of push down as I begin to kind of bend this to give it a nice round shape. So you see what I did there? It really kind of bent them um, so that they are more round because we kind of want them to stick out. So really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pushing down and applying pressure to the pencil as I pull up. And it's kind of giving that a nice curve. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as we kind of get it halfway trained. And what you're gonna want to do is put glue on this guy here. You don't have to put it all the way to the bottom because there is a nice little border at the bottom. Okay, and we're gonna get that glued together like so. Just follow your finger up at the top and make sure that everything is nice and flush. Okay, so once we have these two pieces together, they should kind of sit and actually be able to stand up on, on its own. Um, that way we've got it kind of ready to fall into place eventually when we connect all these pieces together. So the next step is going to be putting together this beautiful rose, okay? And it's simply accomplished by piecing these pieces together as you see here. And then we have these really pretty um, leaves that are going to get glued right on top. Okay, so that is how the piecing works. Okay, just like so. So as you can see here, I've taken the rose and I've glued it onto this round base piece. Okay, it's very simple. Just make sure that everything's nice and aligned and contoured there perfectly. And at this point, we can go ahead and begin piecing all of these segments together. Now, I kind of made a boo-boo here, and the camera stopped recording, so that's why the paper looks a little messy, but you're just going to put some glue there. I'm using a tape gun just to kind of speed things up a little bit. Just make sure the bottom is nice and flush and aligned, okay? This piece is ultimately going to be bending this way, so just make sure that that's got a nice bend, okay? And then this piece, yours is going to be complete. Mine is not because... It was redundant, and we're just going to glue that to itself, or we're going to glue these two pieces together, I should say. Okay, so those are all nice and glued. And then finally, let's see if we can show you how this works. We're going to take the rows, okay, and now these slits beneath the tips of the bottom of those hearts. So you're going to slide that in to both sides until it goes all the way through, and then you should be able to push down and they will lock into place. Okay, so that's how that looks. 
And then finally, you take your heart. Okay, let me just put that down like that. And you're just gonna slide that in to these little slits here to complete that. And there you go. This thing is done and it is beautiful. So I hope you guys had just as much fun putting these together as we did bringing them to you. Now, if you do make any of these projects, I'd love to see your version on various forms of social media, especially Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, and we love when you guys blog about the projects as well. Uh, if you do happen to take a photo and post it, remember to use the hashtag that you see at the bottom of your screen, uh, because we'll be looking for those photos to include them in our Dreamers Gallery, which I'm still trying to fine tune. So um, stay tuned for that. So I hope you guys had fun putting these together. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, please visit our website, 3dsvg.com and use our contact form. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss another video. So uh, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.